with these other major players in the the voice space because voice is such a natural way of interacting it's such a powerful way of human computer interaction with the way that they're approaching this i guess the, what i'm leading to is uh, your involvement with the open voice network and the founding of the open voice network this seems like a very important organization right now that this is seems like one of the most important things that we could be looking at is this standards and privacy can you speak a little bit to the open voice network and why you found it so important to be involved in founding that organization yeah i'm going to speak on a super high level but i can't get too granular and in the weeds okay. since i'm not as active as a member every single day every single week vocalytics is my my, my right. baby and and, and we're, we're definitely very focused on solving problems with that but on the open voice network perspective the founder of the Open Voice Network has been a longtime colleague and friend of mine and a large supporter of Vocalytics and, and what we've done. And frankly, you know, I've, I've worked with John in the past and he's fantastic. So, you know, when it comes down to the Open Voice Network and the problems that they're trying to tackle around privacy, around interoperability, you know, Amazon Alexa's got their stuff. Google's got their stuff. Apple's got their stuff that's a little bit more in-house, and there are a thousand other players that have their own designs as well. Finding ways to say, you know, there isn't just one search engine that's Google. Today, Bing is very prevalent, much and thanks to their investment in OpenAI and ChatGPT and the integration with Bing AI. They've done a great job in capturing a large portion of the market share. Google's had some great innovation from that inspiration as well. I would say from a Vocalytics perspective, and partnering with the open voice network. We're always focused on privacy and becoming those thought leaders on how to, and really staying at the forefront of industry on how to improve privacy for the user. How to improve privacy in an environment is really where Vocalytics steps into play. As, as much as you mentioned that the interaction at, with voice as a medium, for us, we're more focused on less on the, the, the wake words. And for us, it's more on the ambient passive nature of what is that environment and classifying and quantifying and providing actionable data in a passive manner. So I would say a soldier in the battlefield that's driving a Humvee is probably going to have some great value in interacting with the vocal or voice user experience to be able to launch a drone or fire in a certain direction or you know, maneuver the vehicle potentially as well. Lots of different great ways for the user to operate machinery. We're, where we're focused on is can we provide additional intelligence rather than having landmines only in the battlefield? Can you plant a bunch of, you know, tiny acoustic devices like the one I'm holding here? Can you plant those to be completely off the grid and provide a level of intelligence and awareness to that operator that comes in a passive fashion so they can make those better decisions by executing commands could be through voice or could be through uh, traditional means or, or manual means. But for us, we want to provide that level of intelligence completely ambient and passively, which I think is a little bit different than the operability of voice commands. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You have 500 plus sounds that you're, you're in the library already. You're training these models on these sounds, on this ambient sounds. And I think you've made a point to focus on that. And I think that's an important distinction that ambient and environmental sound is different than vocal and, and conversational sound in terms of meaning, structure, identification, privacy, all those, those important facts.